I've been into collecting my whole life. Find stuff, drag it home. Free reign, we did whatever we wanted. The freedom that comes with riding a motorcycle, well, it's unparalleled. You just, you're in the moment. Well, we really didn't get a choice. You know, Dad was a bit of a hoarder. We'd go around the hard rubbish, so he'd throw the kids on the trailer and he'd cruise around, and then he'd shout at us to jump off and pick up a tricycle or a bicycle or a, or a billy cart or something that somebody had thrown out. Whatever was missing on one, we'd rob off another one. We'd go with a whole trail load of painted up tricycles and bicycles and sell them. First time I brought a bike home, like a road bike, he'd chained it to a tree. And, <laughs> You know, I left it there for probably a couple of weeks and I got sick of that. So I got a pair of bolt cutters and cut the chain and took the bike away. And then when I got home, he said to me, you're a big boy now, you're making all your own decisions. Time to look for a place to live. You got two weeks to move out. <laughs> it was the edge of suburbia. So when we got motorcycles, boy, oh boy, was the world was your oyster. At first thing in the morning, seven o'clock, you'd be on your bike and gone meet your mates and then go exploring. It was just Tom Sawyer. We'd have a gun, two guns, one over each shoulder. The cops would pull up. They'd go, hey, going boys? Um, what's going on here? Oh, we're just out shooting birds and a couple of targets and stuff like that. Oh, that's all right then. Well, you guys have a good day. And, you know, and that was the end of it, you know? That's just how it was. Where I was lucky, I think I was riding, there's a bit of a popular motorcycle area right opposite my place. And um, there's a guy there and um, he owned a motorcycle shop. He was like Steve McQueen to me. He was just the coolest cat. He had classic cars, classic bikes. He taught us, you know, you buy the, you buy the age on Sunday morning and you read through the classifieds and you identify something that looks like it might be a good deal. He'd ask the guy all about it and how long he'd had it and what was wrong with it and, you know, and, why he was selling it and sort of get a sense of who the guy was, you know, and then he'd try and buy it for half price, right? <laughs> and mostly he used to get them for like half price. And then we put it in the age and sell it to somebody for like three or four times what we bought it for. I was infected. I mean, as soon as I experienced that, I was like, this is me, this is what I'm gonna do, you know? Antique motorcycles sort of happened by accident. I'd go to all the swap meets and either buy or sell there and we would go out and find bikes, you know, so we were in, in and out of sheds. So you're kind of surrounded by the shit you love, you know, and that's always appealed to me. Indian is something that happened to me. I don't quite know how or why, but I remember seeing an Indian probably 35 years ago. I couldn't look away. I just looked at it and went, wow, that is just beautiful. Indian approached me and said, you know, they, they knew about me and they knew that I was uh, into Indians pretty heavily and um, we got into a deal. It's a really good fit for us because we are passionate about the brand and the people that ride them are a different animal. They want to ride the bike because they think it's the best one, you know, and, and they're beautiful. So come on, I'll take you down and show you a couple of important things. Bella's our mascot. She's our, the shop dog. She barks, but she doesn't bite. You know, when you've got as many bikes as I have, you're gonna have a couple of crazy ones, right? This bike's got a, a Bell Jet Ranger helicopter engine in it. It is the world's most powerful motorcycle. It goes over 400 k's an hour, or your money back. This had 320 horsepower, turbocharged. It's a wild child. Billy Gibbons, ZZ Top, this was his bike, 1978. This one has got a stage three kit, which no one really knows about. So it's called the Destroyer for a reason. Guy phones me up, he says, I've got this old motorcycle, it's an, it's an FN. Turns out to be the first full cylinder, 1905. So far ahead of its time, it's ridiculous, you know. This is a snowmobile from 1940, powered by an Indian motorcycle engine. 
We've got a CB 1100R Honda, the Harley Davidson, um, belonged to RM Williams. The engine, straight out of an aircraft, isn't it? T500, look beautiful. You know, 1972, look at the colours. This is a 1926 Indian Scout. I won the great race on them. This is the bodywork off Burt Munro's land speed record bike. Arnie Schwarzenegger rode that bike in Terminator 3. You find something, you know, you go, that's weird, I've got to have that. You've got to have weird stuff. Every, everything that you see has got a story because when I went and got it, you know, there's the person I met, the person that led me to it, the shipping agent to get it all back to Australia, customs, you know, I mean, there's a story for everything. All right, let's go down to the engine room. This is what drives the business. So this is where all the mechanics hang out. This is where we do our best work. I've got some of the best mechanics available. So basically, anything old, we can do it, and anything new, we can do it. You'll hear the lathe operating in the background, somebody's making a part, because a lot of the parts aren't available for these bikes. If you can't make it, you can't fix it. So that's what we do. So down here we've got the cafe. This is a very important part of the business because we're the envy of the motorcycle industry. People can come down here, get a service. They sit out here, have a cup of coffee, have some breakfast. We've got some of the best food in the area. We service their bike, they ride home. You know, where do you get that? It's, um, it's the way it should be done. You gotta stand out. This stands out. On Friday nights, the whole place goes from being a motorcycle shop into being a nightclub, or say, restaurant come nightclub. We push all the furniture out of the way. This is the dance floor. There's a band set up over here. It's, it's grooving. We get a couple of hundred people in here every Friday, Saturday night. It's a hoot. I've surrounded myself with my staff. They've all been in the industry for 30 years. They've got a passion for motorcycles like I have. We get up every day, come to work. I can't wait to come to work. If I, if I can't get to work before opening, I'm sad because I like to be here and we all roll the bikes out and stuff and we sit down and have a coffee and we shoot the breeze for half an hour and then we all go to work and we all do what we're good at. And we do it because we love it. It's hard to have regrets really. Pretty happy. I'm a pretty happy guy. I'm doing what I want to do. I've got my boy by my side. I've got a great team around me. When I look back at my life, I, I, would, I don't think I'd change anything. It's just how it is.